on today's ProPresenter show brought to you by ChurchTechU.com, five ProPresenter myths. Hi, I'm Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com, where you can find hours of church tech tutorials like this one, courses, and my exclusive community, Church Tech U, because ministry loves company. This tutorial is going to be different from the rest. You see, I keep hearing myths about ProPresenter, and I'm tired of addressing them one at a time. I hope you don't get offended by these, but you should know that I didn't just make up my reasoning. I eat, live, and breathe ProPresenter, so what I'm about to say comes from talking to hundreds, no really, hundreds of churches and learning from them. Myth 1. It's not made for and they don't care about Windows. This is a common one. I hear it all the time. And I realize I'm probably going to get some hate for this, but it's just not true. Look, I'm a Mac guy. I switched way back when Windows 98 was still in use. I'm going to edit this video on a MacBook Pro using Final Cut Pro. I have an iPhone, an iPad, and an Apple Watch. I tell you all this to say I'm not a Windows fanboy. Quite the opposite, in fact. I wouldn't personally use Windows for ProPresenter, but not because of ProPresenter. There seems to be a glitch in Windows 10 that makes it auto-update Sometimes, even after you tell it to stop, using every piece of advice that's available on the internet to do so. So that is a problem. But there are churches that run Pro 6 on Windows with no problems, and some even say that it runs better. I won't go that far, but it's far from being a piece of software that doesn't work at all, as some claim. In fact, I've heard, but haven't confirmed, that it was rewritten from the ground up for Windows. That makes sense. Mac OS has some features that ProPresenter uses that aren't in Windows itself. That's also why the MIDI module and some of the text editing options aren't present. It wouldn't surprise me if we see some of those in Pro, Se Pro 7, although I have no inside knowledge. It comes down to getting the right system, especially the video card, and going from there. Myth 2. ProPresenter should work when I upgrade my OS immediately. Well, did I ever hear this one back when High Sierra was released in October? Big companies like Adobe and Microsoft had issues with it, but somehow little bitty Renewed Vision could have known what the gold master of High Sierra would have while they were launching Pro Video Player 3, by the way, and could have it ready, tested, and let go when High Sierra shipped. A similar idea to this is that Renewed Vision made Pro 5 quit working with High Sierra. The last build of Pro Presenter 5 was re released in May of 2015, though. And it clearly says on RenewedVision.com that it's only compatible with 10.10, .10, Yosemite. So while it might have worked in 10.11 El Capitan or 10.12 Sierra, it may not have, too. So no, they didn't somehow predict the future of Mac OS over two years before High Sierra was announced and write the last Pro 5 update hoping that it would quit working at that time. Myth 3. You can fix any problem by reinstalling. Basically, every Sunday I see churches asking in a panic for help when something breaks. Without exception, the first piece of advice I hear others give is to download and reinstall ProPresenter. While that does work sometimes, it only works in one specific instance. If the ProPresenter download files have gotten corrupt, it doesn't work if the problem is third-party software or hardware, corrupt user files, or something in the OS. Myth 4. ProPresenter uses a triple head to go or another module to use the stage display. This is a common one. 
People want to use the stage display and then ask, do I need the multi-screen module for stage display? Or I got a Matrox triple head to go and I can't get it to work for my stage display. The first thing you should know is that the stage display is built into every version of ProPresenter since I think Pro 3, but maybe Pro 4. So you don't need an additional module. It's just there. Secondly, the way the triple head to go and dual head to go work is by tricking the computer into thinking that the connected display is wider than it is, and then it splits the wide display into two or three monitor outputs. So since ProPresenter needs a dedicated output, the triple head to go just doesn't work like that. Often newer computers have a total of three outputs, so they'll work without additional hardware. But if they don't, just use a USB video card. The one I use is sold by Amazon for about $30 and works on both Mac and PC. My affiliate link is tdm.fyi slash USB video, and that will take you there and help out the show without costing you any extra money. Myth 5. You should send your cameras into ProPresenter and then use it as a switcher. I addressed this in an earlier tutorial. The best I was able to get was between 6 and 8 frames of latency. Doing that, the person on the screen starts to look like a dubbed foreign language version of themselves. Sure, it might be fine for a single song by the children's choir once or twice a year, but using it for the entire service all the time is really going to get annoying really, really fast. So the next time someone shares one of these myths, I hope you'll share this video to help them know what's really going on. You can find it at tdm.fyi slash 5 pro 6 myths. If you like this tutorial, go ahead and subscribe and hit the little bell icon on YouTube to make sure you hear about my videos when they come out. If you'd like to take one of my ProPresenter mini courses for free, go to tdm.fyi slash pro, the number six, mini, M-I-N-I, and sign up for the mini course of your choice for free. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from trinitydigitalmedia.com and churchtechu.com. Go out and change eternity.